All right, everyone, here we are in GarageBand, and today I want to show you how to create a basic rhythm track, including drums. So what you can do is, uh, if you want, you can check out one of these templates. Um, you might want to start with Songwriter uh, that has some microphone tracks uh, where you can do vocals and then also um, some guitar tracks and uh, a drum track. But I always like to start fresh and brand new, so um, I'm going to open up an empty project and GarageBand asks me which, what type of track I want to use. So I can record my guitar or sing using this one. I can plug my guitar directly into GarageBand if I have a guitar interface um, and then I can use all the amps and effects that are available in GarageBand and that's for another lesson. And here you can, uh, you can plug in a MIDI keyboard if you have one of those too. But today I'm going to show you how to create a drum track. So you're going to say, I want to add a drummer. So I hit create. And here, um, already there's a drum track placed. Uh, and the drum kit is this Southern California kit and the drummer is Kyle. Okay, so what does this all mean? Um, well, what you might have to do in order for you to see everything that I have here is you're gonna have to go to uh, the GarageBand menu and then you go to Sound Library. And with the Sound Library, you can start out by downloading the Essential Sounds. Um, and if you find that you're enjoying GarageBand, then you should download all the available sounds. So. It takes a lot of memory on your computer, um, several gigs worth. And so that's why I'm saying maybe you just start with essential sounds first. Okay. And it's also a good idea to let your computer download um, when it's when you're not doing work on it. Okay. So maybe after you watch this video, you can download the essential sounds and then you can go have a snack and then come back and then it should all be good. Okay. So anyway, this is what we're going to do. Um, here I can choose different types of drummers so if I want to try some hip-hop stuff maybe I want to select Dez <coughs> and with Dez it says he draws inspiration from southern hip-hop Dez creates raw sounding trap beats featuring trunk rattling kicks and rapid fire hi-hats okay and so you can check out all these descriptions and whatnot okay but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a standard rock drummer and I don't know, let's check out Logan um, for no particular reason at all. Okay, so Logan is inspired by legendary drum heroes of the past and he plays sparse, hard-hitting rock beats and fills on a retro-sounding kit. Okay, so right away I can just hit play and I can audition. Oops, I just pulled out my headphones. So um, I can hit play and we can hear what Logan has to say on his drums. Okay, that's cool, right? And so I'm going to use this loop tool. I love to use the loop tool when I audition stuff because then I can play with it without having to hit stop and rewind. Okay, um, so once we have Logan, Okay, what I can do is I can click on this region and then this control panel pops up. Now here's where I can communicate with Logan. Um, and so I can say, hey Logan, I don't like this beat, so let's try this other preset. Or maybe let's try this. Or maybe this. Okay? So what I can say is, let's say double live. I can say, Logan, that's too many symbols. So look, I can turn off his symbol. And I can replace it with the hi-hat. That's kind of cool. Okay, now then there's this joystick here. So this joystick, it has loud, soft, complex, and simple. So what I can do is, if you watch here, you'll see the sound waves change when I go softer and simpler. And then I can press play. 
And while it's playing, I can move the joystick too. And so what I want to do is I want to find something that I like. Okay, so I can adjust this. Let's try putting some tambourines in too. Okay, so I can make all types of adjustments here. Um, I can add uh, shakers and hand claps and stuff. The other thing I can do is I can change the setting of the hi-hat. So now it has a different hi-hat pattern and I can change it again. Okay, so there's a lot of fun stuff to mess with here. Now over here, fills, drum fills happen at the end of a section of move of music. And so uh, if I make my fills more active, more frequent, you can hear. So at the end of this fourth measure, you'll hear the big fill come in. Yeah, with a nice crescendo. I kind of like that. Good job there. Uh, what, what's this guy's name? Logan. Good job, Logan. All right. Okay, so you can mess around and find a drum beat that you like. Now, what you can also do then is you can add another section. And so let's say this is my verse, my A section, and this is my chorus, my B section. And maybe what I want is I want the same pattern, but let's go for cymbals during the chorus. So then this is verse. Oh, turn that off. Let's jump ahead. And this is chorus with all the splashy symbols that I want. All right. And then once I do that, I can make adjustments here or whatever. All right. Until it's something that I like. Okay. So I did say we're going to create a rhythm track. So uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to get my guitar ready and I am going to record a rhythm guitar part. And so um, I have my acoustic guitar with me. So I'm going to use the microphone and I'm going to create a new track and um, always test your levels. I don't know, maybe I'll play power chords. So it's a little bit in the red, it's a little bit hot, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Um, I'm also going to plug in my headphones again because when we record, we don't want the sound of the drums leaking into our guitar track. And I'm going to actually label this track. Okay, we don't want it to leak. So we use our headphones. So now I can hear the drums in my headphones and the computer, the microphone, will only pick up the sound in the room, which is my guitar. Okay, all right. Ah, oh, man, I need to figure out what I'm gonna play. Okay, uh, that's fine. Okay, here we go. I am going to record my rhythm guitar part and hopefully you'll be way more prepared than I am um, because I'm just making this up on the spot. So I'm gonna play some sort of power chord thing in G. Okay, here we go. Um, make sure you tune your guitar always before you record and I've already tuned my guitar before I uh, started the video. So I'm not gonna waste your time tuning. Um, I want my count in happening i don't need to turn the metronome on because i have the sound of my drums in my headphones okie dokie good luck to me Okay, uh, hopefully that came out, came out okay. Um, so I go back and I just pulled out my headphones so you can hear what I just did. 
Okay, not bad. So what I want to do is I want to adjust the levels and maybe my guitar part is a little bit loud and I also want to adjust the panning. Always adjust the panning. Um, so with the panning, this controls where the sound is in your headphones or on your speakers. Is it on the left side? Is it on the right side? Is it extreme right? Is it closer to the middle? Okay, so the drum part already is in stereo, so I'm going to leave that in the middle. And then this, I'm going to push it a little bit to the left side um, for no particular reason. Later on when I record a bass part, I probably want to put the bass opposite the rhythm guitar, um, give them all some space so that way you have a lot more clarity in your track if uh, the sounds aren't sitting all on top of each other in the middle. So you do want to push them left and right. Um, and then if I record a vocal part, I'm going to put that maybe dead center. Okay, so let's take a listen to what I recorded. <laughs> show you something if I extend this just a little bit like a beat and then it it'll give me a finish here so so if I didn't do that it'll sound like the drums just stopped right so we add that little extra beat and it gives me like a symbol on beat one All right, so there, that's how you can create a rhythm track. And of course, you can keep adding stuff, you know, add one more rhythm guitar part, add a bass part. Um, okay, so now what you want to do is if you want to share this with someone, like uh, my friend Steve who live, lives across town, um, and I can email him my track, and then he can record his vocal part on top of it. You know, I'll say, hey, Steve, look what I came up with. Uh, can you throw something down for me? And then he might you know put put it on a vocal part okay so I go to share I go to export song to disk and then I name the file uh, rhythm track and then uh, select mp3 highest quality okay Ooh. and also actually what I should do is I should tell GarageBand um, what part I want exported and so right about there, okay? Oops, a little bit more, okay? And then what I do is now that my region is selected, I make sure that my levels are set where I want them and then I can go track, uh, sorry, share, export song to disc and then now it'll export the cycle area, all right? So. Ah, okay, here we go. Hit export, and then now this track ends up in my GarageBand folder. And my GarageBand folder is located in, uh, there's your home folder, and then there's uh, the music folder. And then in the music folder, you'll see GarageBand, and then you'll find the track that you just exported. And then you can email that to your buddy Steve, okay? All right, good job.